What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Sam Shepard trial. Wow. Courtroom drawings, it's kind of a, a dying art form, but it's, it's really unique in that it dates back hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. Actually, it dates back as early as the Salem witch trials. So it's really quite fascinating. I think so, too. The Sam Shepard case was one of the very first cases in the 20th century that really generated a lot of buzz. And these sketches were really the only window for the general public to see what was going on. This is a case, I think, where the whole is much greater than the sum of the parts. For a collector of historical memorabilia or somebody who's a real enthusiast about the case and the fugitive, I could see this approaching $10,000. <laughs> All right. I had no idea these could be worth so much. That puts me in a tough spot. As much as I want the drawings, it could take a long time to sell them. I know he said $10,000, OK? I gave him four grand for it. How about? 4,000 cash and 1,000 in trade. No trade. No trade. OK, I'll do 4,500. I'll give you 43. I'll take it. OK. Today, we will show you the moments when exceptionally rare items came on Pawn Stars. Van Morrison autograph. Chumley stumbled upon a treasure trove of music memorabilia with expert Warwick. Seller Rogers unveiled an astonishing collection valued at nearly $8 million, featuring 10,000 pieces. All right, man. This is it. Wow. <laughs> Warwick said he had a couple pieces, but this is yeah, beyond the scope of what I even imagined. There's probably 10,000 plus pieces, probably close to $8 million worth of memorabilia just in here alone. It really is like touring a museum. Among the rarest items were concert posters, signed photos, and unique artifacts like a Madonna letter with dating notes and a Van Morrison autographed Them poster. This is pretty cool right here. Uh, them, Van Morrison. Yeah. And it looks like an authentic concert poster that you would see hanging up around town to promote it. Yeah. I was really intrigued by this letter because I noticed Johnny Depp's name on here. Johnny Depp's a part of it, but what's special about this, believe it or not, these are Madonna's notes. I've got a couple more pieces I think are going to be worth showing to you, and I've already pulled them off. So this is obviously related to the Eagles, so let's start here. Great guess. This is the jersey Don Henley wore during the Hell Freezes Over reunion tour. OK, that's pretty cool. And the only way to make it more special, these are the drumsticks that he used during the entire tour. All right, well, these items are super cool. Definitely interested in them. Negotiations intensified as Chumley set his sights on the Madonna letter and the Van Morrison poster. With Warwick's guidance, a deal was reached. Chumley acquired the prized Van Morrison poster for $4,650. Well, Warwick, these are the few things that we pulled aside for you to take a look at. Some nice stuff here. What do you think? Let's uh, just start with the Madonna letter. I think the best I can do on Madonna's uh, notes there is uh, $3,000. With the them poster, with the provenance from where we know it came from, uh, you could get 5500 for that. Got it. Well, I think that's everything I need from you. I appreciate you coming down, and I appreciate you hooking this all up. All right. All right. Well, I absolutely love the Madonna letter. Would you take 2000 on the Madonna? No. 2500 No. It's a special piece. All right, but I got to be conservative and listen to Warwick. I'm just going to pass. Van Morrison, I think 45 would be a little fairer, and then I would look good for my boss. How about we meet at 4650? All right, I can do 4650. That sounds good. Done. It's yours. Shaking on it? You got it, man. This is Texas. We got to. All right. Cementing the transaction with a Texas handshake, this remarkable find added to the roster of rare items at Pawn Stars. Sam Shepard trial sketches. In this episode, Earl brought in courtroom drawings from the 1954 Sam Shepard murder trial, which inspired The Fugitive. Rick recognized the trial's impact on shaping fair trials. Earl, who obtained the drawings from an art collector, hoped to sell them for $5,500. I've got some courtroom drawings from the 1954 Sam Shepard murder trial. Whoa. It's like the movie The Fugitive and the series The Fugitive was loosely based on this guy. Right. Not only did this influence pop culture, but Dr. Shepard's case literally changed the way we gave a fair trial in the United States. It was that big. How did you get these? I bought them from an art collector. This is some cool stuff. I really like it. What did you want for them? I'd like $5,500. OK, so you got 35 drawings here, huh? Right. I know about the trial. I don't know anything about Burris Jenkins Jr. It's a hard time trying to figure out what they're worth. I'm going to give someone a jingle. Might be able to help me out with this. 
I just like to give him a call, get his opinion on it. Okay. Rick valued their historical importance, but wanted an expert opinion. Brett appraised the sketches at a potential $10,000 due to their rarity and significance in crime history. Sam Shepard trial. Wow. Courtroom drawings, it's kind of a, a dying art form, but it's, it's really unique in that it dates back hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. Actually, it dates back as early as the Salem witch trials. So it's really quite fascinating. I think so too. The Sam Shepard case was one of the very first cases in the 20th century that really generated a lot of buzz. And these sketches were really the only window for the general public to see what was going on. This is a case, I think, where the whole is much greater than the sum of the parts. For a collector of historical memorabilia or somebody who's a real enthusiast about the case and the fugitive, I could see this approaching $10,000. <laughs> All right. Rick, surprised by the value, offered $4,300, and they eventually agreed on the deal. The sketches, initially purchased for $3.99, turned out to be a highly profitable investment. This deal showed how artifacts related to crime have both historical and monetary value on Pawn Stars. I had no idea these could be worth so much. That puts me in a tough spot. As much as I want the drawings, it could take a long time to sell them. I know he said 10000 okay? I gave him four grand for it. How about... 4,000 cash and 1,000 in trade. No trade. No trade. Okay, I'll do 4,500. I'll give you 43. I'll take it. Okay. I bought the collection originally for $399. I think what I'm gonna do with $4,300, I'm gonna go take a trip to Key West, Florida and do some fishing. AYT XP 2200 Speedboat. Chris presented a 22-foot AYT boat with twin 1,100 two-stroke motors needing repair. Rick expressed doubt about its condition. Chris hoped to sell it for $15,000, but Rick offered $5,000 due to its poor state. They settled at $7,500. So what do we got here? This is a 22-foot AYT. It's got twin 1100 two-stroke motors. Uh, it needs a little TLC, as you can see. It needs a little more than TLC. Oh my god. So what have you done to it, man? I mean, this thing looks like it's you know less than 50% complete. When I picked it up from the previous owner, it was just a haul. Uh, so I worked on getting some of the major systems in. The biggest thing was the, the motors. These are uh, twin 1100 Kawasaki's. So when this thing is done, how fast will it go? Uh, other similar models with uh, smaller motors were doing a 70, 75. So with these larger motors, it might even be pushing 80. Big question, what do you want for it? Uh, right now, in materials and labor, I'm into it about 15000 I was trying to get fifteen for it. There is just no way I could come close to that price. This boat's one of a kind, though. That's uh, cus custom hull, custom engines. Uh, I understand one of a kind. I have some one of a kind dinosaur turrets in my backyard. And just trust me, no one wants to buy them either. I'll give you five grand for it. No, that's not enough. The motors are worth more than that. 7500 take it or leave it. All right, deal. All right, let's go, man. Let's do some paperwork. Rick spent $4,800 on repairs at Bill's shop, Racing Performance Marine. The boat, an AYT XP 2200, was restored with new parts and custom work. The engines produced 180 horsepower each. It reached 72 miles per hour, but needed more repairs. Hey, Bill. Hi, guys. So is it done? Yeah, she's done. Took a lot of work, but she's done. So what ought you do it? Well, first off, we were able to save the paint job. Remember how oxidized it was on the top? Yeah. We had our friend over at the machine shop fabricate the steering wheel. The back seats we repaired. We fabricated a two-in-one exhaust system to equalize the back pressure. The motors were in really good shape. These are 1,100 Kawasaki engines that are putting out 180 horsepower apiece. It flies. We clocked it at 72 miles an hour. All right, that's all it asks. <laughs> Rick's total investment was $12,300. He aimed to sell it for $20,000 to $30,000, potentially making $7,000 in profit. Despite seat size issues, Rick anticipated enjoying the boat. All right, how much am I into it? Um, they could be money pits. You know, what boat stands for. Bust out another thousand. Took a lot of work, but... You actually come out really good on this one. Okay. Um, your bill's about 4,800 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> How much do you think I can get out of this thing? Um, I've checked around. These boats go from anywhere from 20 to 30,000 dollars. 
Looks like you're gonna make some money on this, Pop. Make at least seven grand up. Yeah, you got a lot of room to play with there. Once you ride in it, you might not sell it. You gonna go to the lake with me? Nah, dude, it don't look like my big ass is gonna fit in these seeds. <laughs> Chums either. It might be a it might be a U-boat, buddy. Stunt butt. Come on. Stunt butt. <laughs> <laughs> Big Hoss, help me out of here real quick. Nope. Big Hoss. Come on, Chum, let's go. Quit playing around. Come on, guys. Gun desk. Rick and Corey were intrigued by a customer, Janet, who brought in a unique gun desk from an estate sale. The desk looked like a normal piece of furniture, but secretly had a small gun inside that fired when the inkwell was pressed down. Rick mentioned that hidden guns like this were uncommon and resembled something from a James Bond movie. It's a desk, but it's not really a desk. It's actually a gun. It's a gun desk. Yes. Sweet, that means I got a gun aimed at my right now. Where in the world did you get this? I got it in an estate sale. I was just looking for a nice little desk to put a guest book on. When we got it home, I was trying to figure out how to open it and had a really good look inside it and said, you know, this isn't a, a desk, this is a gun. I've seen guns concealed in all kinds of things, swords, canes, even cameras. I've seen desks with hidden gun compartments, but I've never seen a desk as a gun. It's something straight out of a James Bond movie. However, Rick couldn't purchase it without verifying its age, as he only deals with antique firearms made before 1898. To determine its legality, they consulted Sean. I have never seen one before. I have no idea what this thing is. I only buy guns that are made 1898 and back. That makes it an antique firearm that doesn't have to be registered with the ATF or anything else like that. The problem I have here is I don't know the date this thing was made. Do you mind if I have a buddy look at this thing? Because I am just completely lost here. Not at all. That's Thanks. great. Sean explained the desk's function suggesting it might be a collector's item or movie prop. I have been collecting guns and weapons since I was 10 years old. I've never seen anything like this. It looks to be in that 1890s to about 1910 era, oh, but good. I couldn't tell you one way or the other for absolute certainty. It could have been even just a one-off or maybe a movie prop, what have you. Who knows what it was really used for? The barrel is so tiny, but it's open-ended, means that it could shoot a projectile, and that's an issue. And the other part of this is that it's one to have a gun, but now you have a concealed weapon because it's a hidden gun. He advised deactivating the gun to make it legal for sale, leaving Janet hopeful to return with a legal version of her gun desk. So if I can't guarantee it, it's a gray area for you and it's not worth the risk. Here's an option. You'd have to bring it to a gunsmith and have him professionally deactivate the mechanism. Then it can be legal to buy and sell. That's what I'll do. Thanks for bringing it in. Oh, you're welcome. I really wish I could have bought this because the odds of another gun desk coming in here are slim to none. But the law is the law. Hopefully she'll get it deactivated and bring it back because I would love to have This is where we'll end our video. We hope you enjoyed watching it. Make sure to comment, hit that like, and subscribe button. Hit that notification bell for more videos like this. Share this video with your family and friends. See you soon.